family. I'm Keith Reed, Supervisor for Work Readiness Instruction at our Bronx Grand Concourse location. I hope all things are going well for you as we continue to move through this COVID-19 period. And once again, we here at FedCap want to wish you all a very safe, productive, and healthy return to our workshops someday in the not too distant future. Today is another session in the series of Financial Friday classes that I've been running for the last three weeks. And we have quite a few more to go into the future. So let's just talk about um, how best to select funds, how best to come to an understanding about mutual funds. Now in the previous sessions, I covered mutual funds. What is a mutual fund? Why you should invest in a mutual fund versus investing in perhaps the traditional savings account or the traditional certificate of deposit or CD account. And those reasons were given in the previous sessions, which you can find on the FedCap YouTube channel. I give out and I lay out a clear explanation on those things. So those are the videos I've done for you in the past. So what I'm doing now is I'm going over some of the weeds. In other words, I've stayed away from the weeds because sometimes this kind of financial talk can get to be a little complicated. But today I decided to just kind of wade into the weeds a little bit to give you a clearer and better understanding of not only what a mutual fund could be made up of, but what different types of stocks there actually are out there in the world of personal finance and investing. All right, so let's start with company capitalization. Now, company capitalization is basically this. It is the price or value of each share of stock versus how many of those shares are outstanding to be bought by the general public. As you know, companies can be privately owned or publicly owned. And a lot of those very, very large, huge corporations are publicly owned, which means they accept investment dollars from the general public. That means any of you listen to this voice, might listen to my voice, can go out and buy stocks in any particular or mutual fund that invest in those stocks of any particular company you so desire. And however, you should have a basic, I think, you should have a basic understanding of what that means. So share price, right? Share value and share price is going to be very important to you as an investor. It will determine how much you can get on your investment in the way of return dollars, investment, right? Your gains, your capital gains, all those, those are the kinds of things that I want you to know as you begin to go into selecting the kind of fund that you want, right? Overall, company capitalization to determine the value of a company, the va not only the, va the share price and the value of each stock, thereby the value of the company, but it's basically an accounting rule used to determine the market value of a company. Right? For example, Apple is worth $1.233 trillion, not million or billion, trillion dollars. Right? So if you were to get up from your seats right now and decide that you want to go out and buy Apple Computer Company, you'd have to come up with a whole lot of money to buy that company. You'd have to gather a whole group of investors to join you to be able to purchase Apple outright. Because of its capitalization, its market capitalization, its value, if you wanted to buy the company outright and own it outright, you'd have to come up with somewhere on about a trillion dollars to buy Apple, which means that the share price, the value of each share of stock of Apple is very expensive, all right? It costs a lot to buy one single share of Apple stock. So that gives you just a brief overview of how stocks are valued, right? I want you to have just a step-by-step -step understanding of how a stock is valued. In the mutual fund pool where stocks, cash, and bonds exist in the pool that make up a single mutual fund could be shares of 
Apple, Microsoft, or what have you, right? It could be. You could decide to invest money in the tech sector, right? Silicon Valley. And if you did go in that direction of investing in the tech sector, you would find stocks like Apple and Google and AT&T and quite a few other companies, right? That are tech related. And each one of those stocks in the pool called the mutual fund has a value. And you could buy into the mutual fund and thereby own shares of that mutual fund because inside that mutual fund are all the stocks and bonds and things of that nature for this particular uh, mutual fund that you may be looking for. So that covers that section for right now. So as we continue our discussion around the differences between a small cap fund or stock, a mid cap fund or stock, or a large cap fund or stock, we spoke a moment ago about Microsoft in 1976 being a small cap company at that time, and in 1984, Apple being a small cap company at that time, and in 1997, Amazon being a small cap company at that time, based on the value of the company, if you say were to want to go out and buy it whole, then you'd have to come up with whatever the market value of that company is. And then we covered how do you come to a market capitalization figure? You come to it through basic mathematics and rules of accounting, right? And that would be uh, the value of the share price at the time that you want to buy it versus all outstanding shares that are available to be bought, including some other things such as how much debt the company is carrying, payroll, things of that nature, taxes, things of that nature. So there are some basic, basic accounting rules that you'd have to uh, adhere to if you were going to buy this company and not overpay for it, right? So what is the advantage of a small cap company? Owning a mutual fund that is designed, created and designed to only purchase shares in small cap companies. The design of that particular mutual fund, the goal of that mutual fund is for the purchaser of those shares, the investor, to experience into the future significant growth. In other words, if you had been around in 1976 and bought into Microsoft, then you would have experienced a great degree of growth over the last 35, well, say 40 plus years. If in the mid to early to mid 80s, you had invested in Apple, then you would over the last 35 years experience a significant degree of growth there as well. And if you had invested in Amazon in 1997, you certainly would have ex experienced a significant amount of growth if you had owned shares in that company as well. Or if you had invested in a mutual fund that had bought those shares you both on both sides, you would have experienced significant growth on your original investment, which would be a very, very good thing for you, right? Now, and that's, so that's the advantage of, that's the event. Yes, it's risky because the companies are relatively new and untested, but if the vision for the company is solid and the management of the company is solid, you stand to make good money on your investment, right? Mid-cap funds, that's for the person who wants a little bit of both, right? Uh, a little aggression, again, a little conservative. So you look at companies like, of course, Fresh Pet or Five Below or Yeti, right? Those companies are in the mid-range. Um, they don't move with the speed, perhaps the growth speed potential over the years as perhaps a small cap company, but they still can return to their investor a significant degree of return on their investment, so to speak. ROI, your return, ROI, return on your investment. They can return great rewards for you as well. Um, probably not as stable as the large cap companies, but even less stable are the small cap companies compared to the large cap companies. So let's talk about the large cap companies and the large cap mutual funds. Mutual funds that invest in large corporations like General Electric, General Motors, or AT&T. Because these companies are very old, they've been around a very long time, 
They offer the investors something that some investors hold near and dear, and that is stability. They are not going to knock your socks off with these great gains in stock appreciation value over time. No, those days for AT&T, General Electric, and General Motors are long gone. However, they will return solid, they can return solid and consistent investment return for you and your investment. So if that's where you want to be, if you feel that you need to be invested in a company that's rock solid, been around, has shown it has the ability through all kinds of gyrations in the economy to still stand strong and survive and provide their investors with a modest yet consistent rate of return for the dollars invested, then the large cap companies is the direction for you to go. So that pretty much covers understanding capitalizations of corporations and what they mean in the different categories here that we have. Small cap mutual funds, mid cap mutual funds, large cap mutual funds, but also small cap stocks, mid cap stocks, and large cap stocks. Because stocks are what you find in the mutual fund when you open a mutual fund account and you become a shareholder in a mutual fund. So don't worry about uh, the, so much the difference. I mean, the individual stock thing is if you want to play that game, that's fine. Um, if you have the dollars to do that, you want to do individual stocks, that's fine. But for us and what we're trying to help you understand at FedCap is it's a better place for you to be if you invest in a mutual fund. That way the risk are spread out over many, 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 many different shareholders, number one. And you, you're not as exposed as if you have everything you've ever made and, and saved in your life invested in one stock. Because if that stock goes this way, so goes your investment. At least in a mutual fund, inside the mutual fund could be not only stocks from large cap companies, but uh, like GM or General Motor, uh, General Electric or AT&T, but there may be other large cap company stocks in, in, the, in the fund. And if these, if these sectors, these companies from these sectors go this way, perhaps the large cap funds in the fund also may go in this way, and thereby you can balance out your uh, wins and losses, right? You don't lose so much of your shirt. So that's it for us today on understanding capitalization of a company, market capitalization of a company, and how to look at it when you decide to start selecting a mutual fund you want to invest in. That's the hitch. This gives you an idea of where you should be looking, right? So if you, if you want something aggressive, a little more risky, but aggressive with the potential for real growth over the years to come, small cap would be a good idea for you. If you're not so sure, mid cap is the way to look. But if you want solid, consistent returns on your investment over time from companies that have proven they can do it over time, then I would suggest you go and you find a mutual fund made up of large cap funds primarily. So again, I'm Keith Reed, the supervisor for work readiness instruction here at our Bronx We Care office on Grand Concourse. And I hope this information has been helpful to you and if you have any questions, you can always send me an email at kreid, that's kreid, R-E-I-D, at fedcap.org. And I'll be happy to return uh, your email with a answer, all right? So look forward to seeing, stay good, stay healthy, and I look forward to seeing you all when you return to our office on Grand Concourse. Stay well and be well, thank you.